As a retail investor, I make investment decisions based on incomplete analyses. I also said that it is like a game of jigsaw puzzle. As retail investors, we probably do not have all the pieces of the puzzle. However, if we have the crucial pieces and if we are able to put enough pieces in place, we should hopefully be able to see the picture. That is probably as good as it would ever get, and hopefully it is enough to base our decision on. I like to read what analysts from research houses have to say about stocks I have. Sometimes, they have certain missing pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. However, I would be careful not to take all that they have said unquestioningly. I would especially be very suspicious of their target prices. About two weeks ago, I said that CMB downgraded OCBC with a target price of $13 a share. Back in January, JP Morgan's research house upgraded OCBC to overweight with a target price of $14 a share. At the time, JP Morgan said OCBC could do better as peers like DBS hinted at the possibility of a higher regular dividend, special dividend, and even a probability of share buyback. While UOB had a clear 50% payout for the year. Also, OCBC had a higher common equity tier 1 capital ratio compared to its peers then, standing at 14.4% compared to 13.8% and 12.8% at DBS and UOB respectively. The analysts note that asset quality at the bank has held up much better than expected in the last two years. JP Morgan analysts now says to be underweight OCBC as they see downside to the bank's earnings for the Q1 2023. OCBC will be reporting its quarterly results on May 10. The analysts said that the stock is at risk of weakness over the next three to six months as the economy slows. To this end, they have lowered their target price to $11.50 a share. That is lower than $13 a share, the target by CMB. JP Morgan says that Great Eastern reported soft results, which suggests a downside of around 4% to OCBC's earnings. Great Eastern, a member of the OCBC group, saw its Q1 2023 earnings grow by 10.9% to $244 million year on year. The figure accounts for 12% of the analysts' Q1 2023 earnings estimates for OCBC. This is lower than the average contribution of 16% in the last eight quarters. Furthermore, the insurance group's operating trends were weak with total weighted new sales declining by 22% year-on-year. UOB's and DBS's results both suggest a peaking of operating profit drivers, particularly net interest margin as well as weak growth. JP Morgan says OCBC has weaker asset quality, and it should be the largest driver of its stock price moves. OCBC has the least leverage among the three banks. The shift in capital management to around 50% payout and a payout of 53% in FI 2022 go a long way in addressing some of the concerns. Even if the bank slows down capital accumulation, the current stock of excess capital remains. JP Morgan believes the only way these can be used is via a large mergers and acquisitions transaction, otherwise, the return on equity is likely to stay subdued. The analysis sounds reasonable to me and would explain why OCBC trades at the smallest premium to book value amongst the Singapore banks. OCBC is my largest investment. Does the possible lack of an upside to OCBC's stock price bother me? If I am actively trading stocks for a living, it would possibly worry me. However, since I am investing for income, I am not worried. In fact, I am quite happy that OCBC is accumulating plenty of capital which it could pay out as dividends to shareholders. If OCBC is not able to find any suitable candidate to invest in or to acquire, I hope they would pay higher dividends. I won't let JP Morgan's views worry me and do a chicken little. The sky is not falling. I am staying invested in OCBC and sticking to my plan. If AK can do it, so can you.